Well, welcome along to Donington Park, everybody. We start the 2024 season in the GT Cup Championship. Beautiful, clear skies, albeit it does feel a little bit chilly out there. And we're looking forward to, as ever, four races over the course of a busy weekend. A sprint race and a pit stop race to look forward to today. We'll do the same tomorrow as well. Well, we had the media day here just a few weeks ago at Donington Park, and we managed to catch up with a few drivers. First of all, we spoke to Paul Bailey, the reigning champion. Welcome back to GT Cup 2024. You are not just the GTO champion for last year or the Sprint Cup champion, you're the overall champion. We had a fantastic season. It was truly remarkable to, to win the triple. I'm not aware of anyone doing that before. And it was really down to the support of the team and my co-driver, Ross. Uh, we, we just had a very, very reliable season. Um, we, we finished every single race and we stayed out of trouble. And that's where the, the points built up. We saw you in the Lim Lamborghini Huracan last year. We may well see you in it this year, but I'm really excited. We're going to see the Brabham back out. And that man has got the surname who will be sharing the car with you. You're sharing with David Brabham this year. Indeed. It was an amazing conversation. I'm, I'm friends with David and his wife, Lisa, and myself and my wife, Selena. We're out, we're having a meal, and David said, I need to ask you something really important. And I honestly thought he was going to ask for sponsorship or something like that. And he said, can I race with you this year? And I, I, was, I didn't know what to say. I'm like, of course, absolutely. Um, the most difficult thing was telling Ross Wiley that I couldn't race with Ross this year, and, you know, because Ross is, is very much a good friend and a fantastic racing driver. But to race in a Brabham with Mr Brabham is going to be very, very special indeed, and I'm exceptionally lucky to be able to do that in this season. GT Cup again in 2024. Why, why do you keep coming back to GT Cup? What is it that attracts you? I think it's a whole host of reasons. I think the fact that we get 26 races, there's lots of seat time. I also think that this championship is focused around the AM driver and not the pros. And there are some championships now where the factory drivers are the guys that are the most important people to race the cars. In this instance, the championship for GT Cup uh, that is paid for by the AM driver it is the AM drivers at the top. They're the ones that qualify and it means that I get plenty of time in the car. Uh, and also I think that Hannah is the best organiser of any championship I've ever been in. I mean, we all know what's going on, we're all in a, a good place understanding what's happening next, and we don't ever get caught out of, of the car not being ready to go on track, for example. Um, and I, I think that makes a big difference when you're with somebody and you've got a team around you that really ensure that the racing drivers know what they're doing and they're relaxed and they're ready to go racing and not thinking, blimey, I, I wasn't told we're going out in three minutes and the tyres on the car and I ain't got my suit on. Um, and I have had that in other championships for sure. Um, so I just think it's just run really, really professionally um, and I love it to pieces. Well, that's Paul Bailey, our reigning champion, but two drivers who previously have gone wheel to wheel in GT Cup are teaming up to race together this year. Ian Loggy and Richard Neary share the Team ABBA racing Mercedes. We managed to catch up with them as well pre-season. Richard, Ian, I think of all of the drivers that have been announced for GT Cup in 2024, you were the surprise package for me and you've raced alongside each other as rivals in this championship and others in the past and Ian, you've teamed up with one of your rivals for this weekend. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to it. I think uh, we'll do a good job together. I, I think we're both pretty tough racers and being in the same car can only be a good thing. You look, Richard, at the battles that you've had with, with Ian out on track in the past. Um, you know the way each other drives and therefore you can sort of, you know, complement each other in, in that respect. You must be looking forward to, to bringing him into the family team. Absolutely, yeah. I, I'm looking forward to the season. I think, you know, I think we're an Amman purring, but I think we'll be pretty strong and you know, uh, we, we won't be having any on-track battles anymore, will we? We've cured that, so <laughs> I think we'll. I think we're going to run well together. And you've both got a you know a good CV as well. You're a former overall GT Cup champion back in what was it, 2021, 2022, yeah, and, yeah. and Ian, a former British GT champion from from 2022. So your, your aspirations coming into this season, Ian, must be walk away with the overall championship if you can. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would. Uh like to have a, a big year. We've got a lot of races this year. Obviously, uh, GT Cup is uh, uh, 20 odd races. Um, I, I think overall we can score good points at uh, the majority of the rounds. 
Right, and if we do that, we've got a good chance of being overall champions. So that will be the that will be the aim. All of those races, Richard, it's a, it's a mixture of sprint races and the pit stop races. So come the pit stop races as a as a sporting sporting pairing, you'll have that advantage because you'll have to spend less time in the pits. But as you well know, come the second part of the race, the pros jump in and they'll be trying to hunt you down. Yeah, absolutely. But I think I think what will be key to, to mine and Ian's success is that, that neither of us are learning a new car. We've both done a lot of seat time in the Merc and we both know all the tracks very well. And yeah, we're going to be an am am purring. We, we do, I, I expect us to sort of try and make headway in the first part of the 50 minute session when there are no pros out there. And, and the pit stop penalty, I think historically has, has made it that, y you know, if you both do a decent job, you're still in with a fight for winning it. Out of interest, how did this sort of arrangement come around? When did the, the first conversation take place or the first phone call was made about, hang on a minute, is there, is there a space for me in, in the Avocar this year, Ian? I think, uh, obviously, Probably Richard, Sam, it? <laughs> Richard and Sam have discussed it uh, in the background and then I was having a discussion with Sam about it. And then uh, it sort of, it just sort of, the just evolved from there, just it, yeah. evolved from there, yeah. yeah. And it seems as though, you know, you've known each other a good few years, albeit you've been racing in different cars, different teams. It seems as though there's quite a close-knit friendship already or, yeah. or, or fairly relaxed atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, we both understand each other. We're both sort of similar characters and uh, we both know what we've got to do. I, so we, we, we'll, be, uh, we'll be racing hard, but, uh, but fair. So... I'll, same question to, to both of you. Why did you choose GT Cup for 2024, Richard? Uh, yeah, basically, uh, I, I'm, I'm racing in, in British GT and I, we needed to find a championship that, that was running on the same tyre. So, so I had sort of some... Uh, I wasn't trying to learn a new tyre each weekend and, and, and also something that was going to be competitive to racing. Uh, and really, there's not much other choice than doing this championship. Same question to you. Yeah, I think they want to, to. I'm also racing in British GT, and to, to win either GT Cup or British GT, they both complement each other. As Richard says, the tracks are the same, the tyres are the, the, the same. So it, uh, it makes us both really sharp for both of the competitions. So let's have a look at the Donington Park circuit. It's centrally located in the East Midlands on the Leicestershire, Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire border. We're racing this weekend on the Donington Park National Circuit, which is around about two miles long. It's split into three sectors and has nine separate corners. And this circuit can trace its roots back to the pre-war period. So as the cars head off the start line at Donington Park, they get to Redgate, the first corner, and from there it's down through the daunting Craner curves all the way to the lowest point of the circuit, the old hairpin. From there, they climb uphill, round through coppice, and the final sector, short one, through the right and the left flick of Robert Chicane. So there we go, that's a look at the circuit, and the cars very shortly will be heading around that Donington Park National Circuit in advance of the first race of the season. 26 races to get through. Round one heads off on the formation lap with the driver we've just been chatting to, Richard Neary, starting the Mercedes from pole position. So the teams have to identify and notify GT Cup as to which driver starts in each one of the sprint races. So I can guide you through those drivers in a moment because we'll be heading through the grid. So it's a Mercedes and a Lamborghini on the front row of the grid. Richard Neary is there on pole position. Alongside him is Tom Rawlings, who returns to the championship and is now on board the Top Cats Racing with Hex.com Lamborghini. Row two of the grid is Seamus Jennings. And for company, he has the number three car that's in the hands of Warren Gilbert in the second of the two Top Cats cars. Paul Bailey, the reigning champion, lines up alongside three times a former Legend Cup champion, Miles Rudman, who is new to the championship in his Porsche on row number three. And row four of the grid, it is going to be the first of the cars in Group GT. Mikey Porter in the Forsetti. Aston Martin lines up alongside Jay Shepard in the Lotus. As we move on to the fifth row of the grid, it's uh, Rihanna O'Meara Hunt, who's new to the championship, alongside Doc Bush, who returns in the Team Parker Racing Porsche. Chris Murphy's BMW sits there on the inside of row number six, alongside the number 31 Mercedes, which was going to be in the hands of uh, Charles Dawson for this race, the Team Parker Racing GT4 Mercedes. Then it's Chris Hart, who lines up in the first of the two Morpheus Mercedes. 
on row number seven of the grid, alongside number 11, which is the Paddock Motorsport Jake Paul-driven McLaren. Leona Theobald in the Ginetta. She's starting her 50th Ginetta race in this race. Is next up alongside John Curry, who returns to the championship in the second of the two Morpheus Mercedes. And then at the tail end of the field, it is John Ingram who lines up alongside what should have been the Tim Gray Motorsport Radical. But I've just spoken to Steve Burgess on the run into this race. That threw the oil pump belt earlier on. And they are not in this race. They will be back out, though, for the pit stop race later on today. So a full varied grid, as is ever the case in GT Cup. And for the first time in 2020, we are going to get the season underway. So the red lights are on on the gantry. It is a 25-minute sprint race. Richard Neary gets his foot down from pole position and is on the inside line heading up towards Redgate Corner. But Tom Rawlings in the Lamborghini was not that far away from him. They turn in and it looks as though it's Seamus Jennings that slots himself through into third position. Warren Gilbert's there in fourth place returning to the car that he had a big, big accident at at Silverstone last year. And it's the first time he's driven this car since it's been reshelled by the team over the course of the winter. So they turn their way through the old hairpin for the first time. It looks so like everybody's safely through the first half the lap by the look of things. Tail end of the field just working their way through the old hairpin at this stage, which includes the number 96 car of John Curry there. But already the GT3 spec Mercedes in the hands of Richard Neary that's running in Group GTO this weekend. So it's a GT3 car, but they've taken all of the air restrictors off it and therefore it's running in the open category. He leads the way at this stage. Lots of squirming being done by the cold Pirelli tyres, but you can see already the lead advantage has opened up. So it's a Group GTO Mercedes that leads, a Group GTC Lamborghini there in second place, a Group GT3 Porsche that sits there in third place currently. Fantastic soundtrack to Mercedes as it heads over the start-finish line and Richard Neary chalks lap number one into the book. Tom Rawlings there in second position in the top caps Lamborghini. Then next up it's Seamus Jennings. Followed by Jay Shepard, who's going well at the, the wheel of the National Motorsport Academy Lotus. Charles Dawson coming under attack. That's the GT4 spec McLaren Artura that's trying to squeeze its way through in the hands of former Caterham racer Jake Poole. Now Lamborghini versus Lamborghini. Two different spec cars though. One of which is Warren Gilbert's car. That's a Lamborghini Super Trofeo specification car. The car that's behind is Paul Bailey's, which is, again, another car that runs in Group GTO. It's a Group GT3 car, so GT3 specification. But again, it is running with all of the air restriction and everything else taken off it. So it not to full GT3 spec. It moves up into Group GTO because it's an unrestricted car in reality. So Warren Gilbert's arguably... Might be a little bit quicker in a straight line, but Paul Bailey should have the aero advantage. And is the reigning champion going to squeeze his way through? He's looking for the inside line, heading in towards a breaking area for the Robert Chicane. See the nose of the Lamborghini dip. Through goes Paul Bailey. Picks up the position. Warren Gilbert losing a place. And right behind him now is Miles Rudman at the wheel of the Porsche. So Miles is used to racing. He's been three times a UK legend champion, but legends, if you've not seen them, are little motorcycle engine cars that run on a treaded tyre on our 5 8 scale machine. So a much, much bigger car. Different prospect as well with the Porsche. And he's doing a brilliant job, actually. Not driven anything this powerful in terms of racing before, but he's right on the coattails of Warren Gilbert, who's got plenty of experience driving in the Top Cats Racing Lamborghini. So they sprint their way up towards Schwantz Curve. All of the time, Richard Neary pulling away in the lead of the race. 1 minute 5.360 from him last time through. He was in the 1 minute 4s in qualifying. His lead advantage is already 2.8 seconds, but this is a good battle for 5th, for 6th and for 7th at the moment. Miles Rudman sticking with the task in hand. You can see the last lap time from him was quicker than the Lamborghini ahead. I think Warren Gilbert now is well aware that this would be for group position. It would be for 2nd and 3rd in Group GTC. Group GTC at the moment being led by the sister Lamborghini in the hands of Tom Rawlings. So over the start finish line they'll go. Order still remains the same. Miles Rudman too far back to try anything in towards the braking area for Redgate Corner. Porsche just edges up onto the coattails of the Lamborghini of Warren Gilbert. But again, just not close enough to try anything. Needs to try and close that gap a little bit more as they head downhill through the Craner Curve. So picturesque, that part of the Donington Park circuit. The undulations down in towards the lowest part of the track, the old hairpin. Nice and neat and tidy from Warren Gilbert. Still hanging on to sixth position. Miles Rudman a little bit further away. Not by much, but an extra car length back. So the gap from Paul Bailey to Warren Gilbert and the gap from Warren Gilbert back to Miles Rudman looking fairly equidistantly spread at the moment. 
quick flash of the brake lights as they pitch the car in towards Coppice Corner. And then build the speed again as you head down the short straight. The Starkey Straight, the Exhibition Straight. It's actually officially unnamed the straight. There is our GTH leader. That's for the GT4 specification cars. And at the moment, it does look as though it's a 1-2 for Facetti, who are a new team. Plenty of experienced individuals within the team, but for Setti, a new team that are based on the doorstep of Snetterton, which of course is a circuit we'll visit a couple of times over the course of the 2024 GT Cup Championship season. Chris Murphy back for another season at the wheel of the E46 M3, the Woodrow Motorsport car, which again has slowly been developed all of the time. He's just ahead of Charles Dawson, who's in the Group GTH Mercedes, originally scheduled to be driving solo throughout the course of this weekend, but he is now partnered up with Seb Morris former British GT champion and those two are doing a, a dual campaign potentially racing with us in GT Cup but also racing in the British GT Championship so we've got just under 19 minutes of the race to go Chris Murphy turns his way in the BMW up towards McLean's corner Chris is a former champion there goes the number 11 car that's Jake Poole nice to see Jake with us this year in the Paddock Motorsport car been racing caterums for the last season or so but GT4 specification McLaren Artura and then just behind him is Keith Bush at the wheel of the silver and almost martini liveried car isn't it Doc Bush former motorcycle racer who raced with us for the first time last year in the team Parker racing Porsche in GT Cup missed a couple of rounds because he got tangled up in an incident wrong place wrong time kind of incident he at the moment is trying to hold off another car that's in group GTH I'll go through what the individual groups are shortly. And that car that's behind him is the first of the two Morpheus racing cars, which is the car that Stephen Walton shares with the man who's behind the wheel of it at the moment, Chris Hart. Now, they had a good season last year. Morpheus Racing finished second in the team standings. And Stephen Walton and Chris Hart topped the group GTH standings. So they are champions from last year in their group. This is Leona Theobald at the wheel of the number 86 SVG Motorsport Ginetta. Leona largely racing... Ginettas, whether it be Ginetta Juniors, then moved up into the Ginetta GT5 Championship, and last year was racing in the Ginetta GT Championship. As I say, she's having her 50th race in a Ginetta, and her teammate for this season, James Townsend, when he jumps in the car for the pit stop race later on, he'll be having his 100th Ginetta race. Something to celebrate for the two of them over the course of this weekend. Good squabble going on, Jake Paul, trying to fend off the aspirations of Chris Hart, whilst they're both coming under pressure from Doc Bush. This is going to be for 12th, 13th and 14th position. Doc Bush losing out to the Morpheus number 69 Mercedes that time through. And now Jake Poole is feeling the pinch a little bit as the Mercedes tucks from behind him to drawing alongside. Chris Hart tries to throw a dummy, then realises the door is closing. So Jinx back to follow the McLaren Artura through Redgate Corner. Runs a little bit wide on the exit of it. Jake Poole is running fourth in Group GTH at the moment. Chris Hart will be fifth in Group GTH, and this will be for overall 12th and 13th places in the race. So down through the old hairpin, bouncing off the kerbs. Some really hefty kerbs on the inside if you take too much kerb and try and shortcut the corner too much. There's so some really hefty kerbs on the inside of a few of the corners here at Donington Park. And again, you can see Chris Hart trying to harry Jake Bull round through the corners. But there's no chink in Jake's armour at the moment. 17 minutes to go. He's still hanging on to fourth overall in Group GTH. If you've not seen GT Cup before and you're wondering what the individual groups are, well, Group GT3, we only have one car in that for this weekend, is for cars that run to full GT3 homologation. So, in other words, cars you'd see maybe in the British GT Championship or in the GT World Challenge Europe. Uh, Group GTO is for open specification cars, so that can include GT2 and GT E cars and in the case of a GT3 if you take all the air restrictors off it then you drop into Group GTO. Group GTC which we've got a few cars in that's for cup specification cars which are uh, built within the last five years so in other words that could be as in the case we've got a few of them out Porsche cup cars uh, Lamborghini Super Trofeo cars even Ferrari Challenge spec cars will be eligible for that as well uh, and then the other group which is represented this weekend is Group GTH and that is for GT4 homologated cars, i.e. the two we're looking at now, the McLaren Artura GT4 and the Mercedes AMG GT4. So those are the groups that are represented this weekend. 
We do have a Group GTA and Group GTB, but no entrance over the course of this weekend, so we'll, we'll tell you about those as and when cars appear in those groups later on in the season. So first 10 minutes have as good as gone. Still 15 minutes remain. It's still this fantastic battle for fourth and fifth in Group GTH. The McLaren and the Mercedes of Jake Paul and Chris Hart, respectively, still squabbling away. Despite the fact they're squabbling, they're still pulling away from Doc Bush. And into the pit lane, I'm afraid. That's Tom Rawlings that's in. Not quite sure what the problem is with the Top Cats racing with Hex.com Lamborghini. But he was running right up there, wasn't he, in second position. And I'm afraid something has brought him into the pit lane. Nothing obvious as to what was wrong with the car. So inquiries will have to be made and we can no doubt let you know later on. So that now means that Seamus Jennings in the Porsche moves up into second position. The GCAT Racing Porsche which is this car here, but look at the squabble. Look at the pressure he's under, because he's got Jay Shepard in the National Motorsport Academy, Lotus sitting directly behind him. They also squeeze their way through and past John Ingram's McLaren 570S. John, new to the championship, driver that's raced in a whole raft of things over the years, John Ingram. Jolt a new team as well that are based down in Southampton. Saw him coming, let the two cars go through. So this is GT3 specification Porsche fighting away with... GTO specification Lotus down through the crane of curves they'll go and that is for second and third place and we've had the change by the look of things Coppice Corner I think we just missed it but Chris Hart has snuck his way through and ahead of Jake Paul so the Morpheus Racing Mercedes gains the place that will now move Chris Murphy up into 12th position and put him fourth in the group Jake Paul down to oh, sorry Chris Hart up to 11th position and fourth in the group Jake Paul down into 12th and it does look as though whatever the problem was that brought Tom Rawlings into the pit lane does mean retirement for his car by the look of things. So there's Warren Gilbert. He still hasn't as yet fully disappeared out of the wing mirrors of Paul Bailey's Lamborghini. Lamborghini Huracan. Great sounding car as well, the Huracan. Accelerating its way over the start-finish line in the hands of the reigning champion. Warren Gilbert right behind. Back to the squabble for second as well. Shepard Jennings still not able to dispense with the attentions of the Lotus that sits behind in the hands of Jay Shepard. Chris Murphy still hasn't fully shaken off Charles Dawson either. Chris Murphy's car is the oldest in the field. The E46 BMW M3, which has continually been evolved over the years. That car is running in Group GTC for this weekend, I believe even though it isn't quite a cup specification or challenge spec car, but the performance of it makes it better suited to that group than anything else. Richard Neary is well and truly amongst the traffic now, isn't he? So up the inside of Doc Bush, the Team Abba Racing Mercedes, but he will share in the pit stop race later on this afternoon with Ian Loggy, turning its way down through the Craner curves. Richard Neary, a former champion overall, when he shared the car with his son Sam Neary. He was the 2021 GT Cup champion pressing on and are we going to have a change for second Jay Shepard almost thought about it the door just was closed in time by Seamus Jennings so Seamus doing a good job of hanging on to second place at the wheel of the GCAT Racing Porsche and is desperate to try and hang on to second even if the Lotus behind got through it would still be the leading group GT3 for Seamus Jennings just because of the number of entries we've got in that category over the course of this weekend but they are now 21 and a half seconds adrift of the race leader so Seamus Jennings what done a bit of British GT in the past he was runner-up in GT Cup in the GTC category back in 2014 So, down in towards the, you could leap their way through the chicane. Now, by the look of things, over the start finish line they come, Jay Shepard trying to work his way alongside. Is he going to get ahead of the car of Seamus Jennings? He's alongside, he's trying, rather running outside at Redgate Corner to make it stick. So, Seamus Jennings losing the place, through goes Jay Shepard. Moves up to second overall, and down to third goes Seamus Jennings, who has made contact with, I think, some of the wildlife out on circuit, and it may well be that 
possibly. The front of the Porsche has got a bit of damage to it. All the radiators, of course, are in the front of the Porsche, and I think you can see the telltale signs of where he made a little bit of contact with some of the wildlife around here at Donington Park. So hopefully that is not what's causing him to slow his pace. Now, the last lap Seamus Jennings did was a 2 minute 7.0. His best is a 2 minute 6.6. .6. So he's not that far off his best because, of course, the tyres are going to degrade a little bit. So I don't think there's any real cause for concern at the moment. So through goes Doc Bush. Leona Theobald in her 50th Junetta race, not that far behind. Those two are fighting for position. That'll be for 13th and 14th place. Then John Curry comes through, and then it would be the fight for second and third. Paul Bailey, look, still hasn't at the wheel of the Black and Zaglo Lamborghini, pulled away from Warren Gilbert, who's sticking with the task admirably, isn't he, to try and harry the Lamborghini ahead of him. Again, they're in different groups. Paul Bailey is a Group GTO specification car. It's a Group GTC spec Lamborghini Super Trofeo car for Warren Gilbert. As I say, this is the car that he, well, as good as wrote off at Silverstone, what was it, last year? And it's the first time he has driven this car subsequently. He has been back out in GT Cup, did a couple of races once he was recovered after that nasty incident in, in testing. But the car has been fully reshelled by the team over the course of the winter. I was chatting to Warren earlier and he can't thank the team enough because literally they reshelled the car, haven't done anything else to it. It's run so, so well. They've literally left it as it was. And he cannot believe that yeah, they've done all of that and they've not really had any issues with it. And he's doing a really good job, actually. He's clinging on to the GTO car in the hands of the champion, Paul Bailey. So through and over the start, finish line, I come. Loads of dust in the background as Miles Rudman leaps over the curves and takes a little bit of grass on the exit of the Robert Chicane. So that will have lost the Porsche a little bit more time. Put some dust on those Pirellis as well. But less than 10 minutes to go. And other than Tom Rawlings coming into the pit lane, I think the race has largely gone to plan for everybody so far, at least. The race leader is now on lap number 15, and Richard Neary leads by almost 23 seconds now. 22.8 seconds last time through the race leader led by. Haven't seen much of him in the race, that's largely because he's disappeared into the distance. Work to do for Paul Bailey, though. He's got a car he'll need to try and work his way through before too much longer. And that's one of the Morpheus racing cars, and that will be John Curry's car, I think. So wait until the exit of Coppice Corner, get on the throttle, get a good exit off it. Warren Gilbert has to wait for a split second longer just to get on the power, and that has maybe just increased the gap between the two of these very slightly. So this is going to be the battle for fourth and fifth position. Last time they came over the start-finish line, eight-tenths of a second was the gap between the pair of them. This time, as they come over the start-finish line, it looks as though it's gone out further. I think the transponder isn't working on Warren Gilbert's. No, it's down to 0.6 of a second. It has come down. Transponder didn't quite register as he came over the start-finish line. Group GTH still being led at the moment by Mikey Porter. Now, Mikey is getting a few miles in in the Aston Martin over the course of this season. The opening round of the British GT Championship at Alton Park it was a good weekend for them, where they claimed a win and, what was it, a third place, I think, in the opening round. Driving with a, a different co-driver this weekend than he's in British GT. He's got Matthew Higgins on board for the pit stop race later on today. Matthew, who has done a bit of single-seater racing out in the States and has largely done lots of karting, whereas Mikey Porter, who's behind the wheel of the number nine Fossetti car now, raced in Ginetta Juniors last year, where he finished fourth in the Ginetta Junior Championship but stepping up from a little Ginetta G40 with a, what's it, 1.8 litre ZTEC engine behind the wheel to a thumping great big GT4 Aston Martin, you'd think would be a, a bit of a chasm to jump. But as ever, young drivers just adapt instantly. And certainly for Mikey Porter, he's got plenty of talent and has just settled in so, so well with the team and the car. Chris Murphy is still there in ninth place at the moment, sitting third in Group GTC. He's got the tenth place car of Charles Dawson still right behind him, who is third in Group GTH. So two cars, both third in their respective groups, fighting over ninth and tenth positions respectively. Chris, who's been a fundamental part of GT Cup for a good number of years now. Charles Dawson, I think, making his debut in the series. Now, Doc Bush has got a car to deal with here. He can't afford to be delayed because he's got Leona Theobald right behind him. And the car is squeezing his way through and past his John Ingram at the wheel of the Jolt Racing 
McLaren 570. Keith Bush has gone through. And now this could be the opportunity for Warren Gilbert to pick the pocket of Paul Bailey as they struggle to get past the back marker. Just make the back marker in the wrong place. Can Warren Gilbert prize the door open? Yes, he gains a place. Also dives through on Doc Bush as well. Paul Bailey follows him through. Now what Warren Gilbert was trying to do there was get a car between him and Paul Bailey. Didn't quite happen in the end because Paul Bailey also took the opportunity to squeeze past the Porsche. So the two Lamborghinis still busy squabbling away. But that worked in the favour of Warren Gilbert very much so, didn't it? He got a better run coming past that number 370 McLaren coming out of Coppice Corner and Paul Bailey couldn't quite get on the gas in time. Good to see John Ingram with us. It's a driver who's done a bit of Clio Cup UK. We saw him in the Le Mans Enduro series as well, John Ingram. Did British Formula 3 way back as well. Now this is for position, I think, isn't it? Yeah, Leona Theobald trying to work her way through and past Doc Bush. Group GTH Ginetta, the G56, fighting away with the Group GTC Porsche. Leona gets a better exit coming out of McLean's corner, draws herself alongside Doc Bush, who should have more power in a straight line. But Leona still braves it out, going in towards Coppice, bounces over the curbs, avoids making contact with the Porsche. So Doc comes out of Coppice corner, still just ahead, with less than five minutes to go. And now, of course, in a straight line, that Porsche is going to pull away from the Ginetta. Onto the brakes and in towards the left and right flicks at the Robert Chicane. Doc Bush hangs on to the place. So he's done a good amount of racing, lots of historic racing, including Goodwood, former motorcycle racer Doc Bush as well. But right behind is Leona Theobald. So fresh out of the Ginetta GT Championship last year, driving a very similar car in terms of the G56. But moving over to partner up with James Townsend in GT Cup for this year. So celebrating her 50th Ginetta race, this one. Four minutes to go, nice and neat and tidy, also through the old hairpin. Carries a bit more corner speed through that part of the circuit than the Porsche ahead. But horsepower is always going to favour the Porsche of Doc Bush, so as long as he can get cleanly off the corners, it's going to be a bit of a task for Leona to squeeze her way through. Didn't quite make friends with the apex there, though, as they went up towards McLean's corner. Through Coppice. And again, this is where the pendulum swings back in favour of Doc Bush and the Porsche, who in a straight line is just going to ease away again. With three and a half minutes to go, Richard Neary is now 30 seconds up the road from Jay Shepard's Lotus. And the Lotus has now pulled away to the tune of three and a half seconds from the number 33. Porsche in the hands of Seamus Jennings, who still remains there in third place. The fight between the two Lamborghinis for fourth and fifth still going on. Still Warren Gilbert in the Top Cats racing machine just ahead of Paul Bailey. Remember, Paul is the reigning champion at the wheel of the Kendall Developments car. Now, Bailey last time through, you can see at the bottom of your screen, was about three-tenths of a second quicker than Warren Gilbert, so the gap is edging downwards. And Paul is looking as though he might try and squeeze his way back through. He's not going to do it at Coppice Corner. Get a good exit coming out of Coppice, and it could be an opportunity to ease the GTO specification Lamborghini Huracan back alongside the Group GTC car and I think he might just be about to do it Warren Gilbert might get boxed in by a back marker here as well if he's not careful no Paul Bailey goes back through retakes fourth position and we've got a car to deal with which I think is Jake Poole's Paddock Motorsport McLaren Artura as they go over the start finish line so with two minutes to go 20 laps now completed by the race leader Paul Bailey has got past Jake Poole's McLaren. Warren Gilbert also managed to put a lap on it before they got towards Redgate Corner, so they can continue their battle now as they descend down through the Craner curves on lap number 21. Nothing between the pair of them. Bit of a mid-corner wiggle there from Warren Gilbert. You could just see the car didn't quite do what he expected it to do mid-corner, so just had to put in some steering correction, and instantly you can see that Paul Bailey has pulled another couple of car lengths there. So, very small mistake for just maybe the tyres not quite giving the level of grip that Warren expected and we're also seeing black and white warning flags now going out that's going out for car number three I think so that car will have to be careful which is Warren Gilbert Chris Murphy still fighting away with Charles Dawson so this is still the squabble for ninth and tenth position whilst Jay Shepard squeezes his way through and past so that's the car in second place Getting past Charles Dawson. Should be able to ease his way past Chris Murphy onto the top of Hollywood. And Chris 
quite sensibly just moves out of the way, lets the quicker car go through, forewarned by the marshals, waving their blue flags that quicker cars are approaching. Also a black and white warning flag out for car number 10 as well now, and that is going to be Rihanna O'Meara Hunt at the wheel of the second of the two for Seti Aston Martins. Rihanna, who has moved over now to the UK, she's a Kiwi from New Zealand, but has now moved over to the UK. Family over here anyway, which makes it easier. And in the all-female car as well, because Jodie Sloss is her teammate for this season. So 30 seconds to go. Richard Neary is on his last lap, down through the Craner curves. He has built a substantive margin in the lead of the race. Doc Bush. So uh, James Jennings, I should say, rather, in the second of the two Porsches, trying to squeeze his way past that fight that's going on for 10th and 11th places. And in the background again, Paul Bailey and Warren Gilbert are still at it as they head on to their final lap of the race as well. And this is going to be for fourth and for fifth position. Group GTO Lamborghini Huracan just ahead of Group GTC car. Warren again needs to be careful. It's already been forewarned with regards to track limits. The car just went beyond the red and white painted curve there onto the green section. That may well be picked up on by race control. So he's treading a fine tight rope as Paul Bailey then runs wide going in towards the old hairpin and gifts the place to Warren Gilbert as over the start finish line to win round one of the 2024 GT Cup Championship comes Richard Neary at the wheel of the Team ABBA Racing Mercedes. So Richard Neary, a former overall GT Cup champion, claims the first win of the 2024 championship season. Second place will be Jay Shepard. Third should be Seamus Jennings. And it does look as though Warren Gilbert is going to finish in fourth place following that small mistake from Paul Bailey. So here comes Jay Shepard towards the checkered flag. Warren Gilbert trying to squeeze his way through and past... Charles Dawson, so there's Jay Shepard in the Lotus, here comes Seamus Jennings to finish in third place, and fourth place on the line, is Paul Bailey just about going to get there with the extra grunt in the GTO car, yes he does, he just goes through I think and ahead of Warren Gilbert, we'll await for confirmation of that because Warren Gilbert's transponder isn't working and it shows that Warren Gilbert did hang on to fourth place by a tenth of a second from Paul Bailey in the end, so it was the number three Lamborghini in fourth position, Paul Bailey didn't quite get there, finishing in fifth place. Miles Rudman sixth, and Group GTH will have been secured by Mikey Porter, who finished in seventh position at the wheel of the Forsetti Motorsport number nine Aston Martin. So for the number six Mercedes, Team Abba and Richard Neary, they get the season off to the best possible start, winning by a very handsome 27 seconds in the end. That's the way to start the season. And certainly for the Amman pairing of Richard Neary and Ian Loggy, they'll be looking forward to carrying forward that pace into the pit stop race that will be taking place later on today. We're scheduled to have that pit stop race starting at around about uh, 10 past five. So it'll be about five o'clock this evening, probably when our live stream will get going in advance of our second GT Cup Championship race of the 2024 season. So all of the cars working their way back round in towards the pit lane area. There go the two Forsetti Motorsport Aston Martins. And a good job done by both of those, Mikey Porter and Rihanna O'Meara Hunt, who is in for the full season, partnered up with Jody Sloss. We can confirm the results for you then. First race of the season, the number six Mercedes of Richard Neary claims the win from Jay Shepard in second place, but look at the gap between the pair of them. Seamus Jennings was there in third place, uh, and Warren Gilbert snuck fourth in the end, just ahead of Paul Bailey, who finished in fifth place, the reigning champion. Sixth place, Miles Rudman. Seventh place in the winning group, GTH, goes the way of Mikey Porter. Rihanna O'Meara Hunt finishes in eighth place. Chris Murphy and Charles Dawson had a brilliant battle over ninth and tenth place. Then it was Chris Hart who finished in 11th place. Jake Paul in his first GT Cup race in the McLaren Artura was in 12th place, head of Doc Bush in 13th. Fiona Theobald in her 50th Ginetta race finished 14th, head of John Curry, who was 15th. And John Ingram was the last of the finishers in 16th position. Sadly, we lost the car of Tom Rawlings when it was running in second position. He had to bring the Lamborghini Super Trofeo car in towards the pit lane. And that's the way that they have wrapped things up for the first race of the 2024 championship season. So all of the cars being pushed back into their garage areas. They'll be back out, as we say, later on this afternoon. Around about five o'clock, probably, we will go live. But for the meantime, thanks for joining us for the opening round of the 2024 GT Cup Championship. Go and grab yourself a cup of tea and some lunch. We'll see you later on. Goodbye. Yeah.